Tired of the everyday grind? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you Escape. Escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure.
colonies are a proud people, and on that day damage had been done to their pride. My heavens, I had no idea how much damage until I met the high priest. He received me in the inner court after Tempest. My name is Raylan. It has been a long time since your people and mine have spilled blood. Are you speaking of the Dutch government or white men? Both. We are peace-loving. I do not need to tell you that. But today there is anger within us. I cannot say where it may lead. Because of the foolish and thoughtless antics of boys, they will be dealt with. They will, Manier. Is that a threat? They will be dealt with. Have I not always been fair with you, Meda? Always, Manier. Then let me attend to the matter. You may do as you wish. You are the government resident. Will you tell me, have you found the young men? By now, they may have been found. And the women? They too will be dealt with. They were not priests. No, but they have brought shame upon us. One is my own daughter, Leang. Oh, I am sorry. Now you must forgive me, Munir. I have duties to attend. Um, no. Madame, you are an educated man. You know the Englishman meant no harm about stupidity and ignorance, and I cannot believe they would harm your daughter. Good afternoon, Munir. <laughs> I, I could not exactly blame the high priest, but to allow sympathy to interfere with my duty was impossible. Before the thing went any further, it had to be stopped. There had not been a native uprising for over 30 years, and I frankly valued my position too much to allow one now. Bali is quite a luscious place to spend one's life, you see. I went to the constable, Manier Kirlin, and discussed the matter with him. I wondered what had happened, Manier Raylan. It's altogether too quiet for this time of the day, and I don't like the sound of that gong. Do, do you think they would take up arms? Oh, I doubt it. I very much doubt it. Still, we mustn't be positive, must we? I trust that the governor has not heard about this. Oh, my heavens, no. It would mean our job. I, I, I tell you frankly, Kirlin, I, I'm worried. The Balinese seem to have disappeared. There wasn't a soul about when I came down. Mm. Uh, the tourists back aboard the ship? I imagine so. Captain Logan was seeing to it. And Maison would not say what has happened to the idiot boys who did this. No, no, but, but you know the old man. More than likely, his daughter and the other one ran off with them of their own accord. All the girls love visitors. Unfortunately, this time it is the head priest's daughter. Excuse me. Oh. Hello. Constable Singh. What? No. Where? All right. Get as many men as you can, since they are off. What happened? Yeah, yes, they'll be along straight away. What happened? Very bad. Idiotic. Hello, Cornelius. Kerwin here. I want every available man on the street in two minutes. With guns. You understand? What has happened? No, no, it's the natives. They're running amok. I just got a call from the constable at Bateau. I'll explain to you later. Have you a pistol, Minerva? No, my, my heavens, no. no. You better take me. They are attacking? What have they done, Colonel? They're tearing about Bula Lang, waving their swords all over the place. Searching for white men. That's as much as I could get over the phone. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, please, Manila. Well, it had happened. That lazy, delightful island. Those lovely, hospitable people had seemingly gone mad with anger over the antics of three tourist boys from an English school. I, I could not believe it, but there it was. Bali was in the midst of an uprising. We, we drove in a small lorry to Bulelang, and when we got there, there was not a sign of life in the town. 
I don't mind telling you I was frightened. Nothing like this had ever happened to me. And here I was, walking along the street with a pistol in my hand. Cornelius, have your man patrol the wall. If you have any trouble, blow your whistle. Yes, sir, yes. You are the only man. Where is everyone? Oh. Damn it, old man. I don't like this way. The town is completely empty. But they would not leave their shop open like that. They would if the temple people ordered them to. They must have run off to the hills. Any whites living here, Dr. Norris? No. Not in the native quarters. Unless they were visiting for some reason or other. No, I really think I had better notify the governor. If this thing spreads... I've heard about it at Bazong. It's already spreading in here. They have... They... Bruce, what? What? You, you, you see somebody? What? Outside of the road. In that shop. See? No. Come on. What? I, I see nobody. I... All right. Come out. You in there. Oh, I say. I say. English. Oh, Johnny, good good chap showing up. I thought you were savages for a moment. These little devils, where did they go? We should like to know that, too. Are you from the ship, sir? Yes, I should jolly well say that I am. This is bad form, you know. Awfully bad form. Would you mind telling us what happened? Oh, well, actually, I happened to foggy at one moment. I was examining some rather quaint idols in the shop over there, and then a, a herd of screaming Balinese roared down the road, gibbering and brandishing perfectly huge swords. I managed to get away and hide. It's not good enough, you know. You Dutch chaps ought to do something about it. Just one moment, please. Is there anyone else with you? Uh, with me? No, no, not at the moment. No, no. I imagine the other two chaps went back to the boat. You are not by any chance one of the three young men from Lexford College. Oh, marvelous. How on earth did you... Oh. Oh, yes, of course. The tie, what? Right. You started all this. Do you realize that? I, I beg your pardon. I, I beg your pardon. Who are you? I am the Dutch resident here, Raymond. And this is the chief constable. My name is Curley. Oh, well, well, how do you do? I'm Reginald Muckridge. You are under arrest, Mynheer Muckridge. Under <laughs> arrest? That's impossible. I'm a British son. You and your friends went into the Temple of Serene today and behaved in a shocking manner. What has become of the native girl? <laughs> My dear child, I haven't the foggiest notion. Not the foggiest. Do you understand that the whole island is in a state of revolt because of your stupidity? Oh, My dear, If sir. your two friends are found by the natives, they will most certainly be killed. Can you understand that? But actually, it was only a little uh, They're coming back. They must have seen us from the hills. Come on, we've got to get back to the lorry. Uh, I, I say, does this, does this sort of thing happen here all the time? I mean, actually... Not until you arrive, my dear. <laughs> you English seem to have the knack of too late. Just got around behind us. Look, my Joe. My Joe, there must be hundreds of them. What? I mean, actually. What do you think, Colonel? I don't know. We can't stand them off here. I say, hello, some of, some of your chaps tearing it this way. Yeah. Yeah. They, they have surrounded the whole town. We. We fired over their heads, but it, it didn't stop them. Can't get the lorry. I'm afraid we'll have to hold out here until help comes. How many rounds of ammunition have you got, Cornelius? Only the regular issue, Minier. There are seven of us not calling the English. <laughs> They're getting ready to attack. Yes, yes, quick. Set hot. We'll have to make a run for it. Uh, now. <laughs> Refuge in the native hut and awaited the attack. 
As I said, the entire population of Bunilang were descending upon us armed with swords, knives, and clubs. All shoes until you're sure of hitting them. We can't waste ammunition. Very well, Miriam. I say, any of you have got an extra gun for me? Mr. Marcus, get back against the wall and stay there. Kindly remember you are under arrest. Oh. They're stopping in the road. Perhaps they've come to their senses. I say, look, they've got Foggy and Harrison. Blast them. What? Foggy and Harrison, we're doing the tour together. Uh, uh, Foggy, Harrison, it's all right. Foggy's here. Uh, be quiet. Hold your fire. Please, but be careful. It may be a trick. I'm the young Englishman, we shall attack. It is the high priest, Medan. Shoot him down first. It may stop the No, wait, wait, wait a moment. Medan! We know the other one is inside with you. Bring him out. You know quite well that we have no intention of doing that. I warn you. Has your daughter been harmed, Maidan? Or the other woman? I will not discuss this thing with you. We're one of the English ones. No, blast. Blast and double blast. Unless you release those men at once, Maidan, it will mean severe penalties for your people. I say again, we shall deal with the English men. No. They must die. Oh, I say. Maybank, will you give me five minutes to think it over? We will give you five minutes. The two Englishmen are being taken out of your sight. The manner of their death will be prepared. If you do not decide to give on the other, you will hear his friends as they die. We could see from the doorway as a half dozen natives took the two young Englishmen down the road and out of sight. Maidung stood across the street from us, arms folded, waiting, and about him were an incredible number of men, sullen and quiet. To me, it was as though the whole of the Balinese male population was there, not really caring whether we would agree to give up Mokovic or not. They would be just as happy to kill all of us. I still say shoot Maidan now. It may break them off. No. There must be another way. Well, you mean to say that you'll simply sit here and allow their chance to be murdered? Well, I won't. You give me a gun and I'll go on after Mr. Mokovic, you are very young and very foolish. You would be cut to pieces in five seconds. And your friends would die much more slowly. Oh, really? The governor must have heard by now. The soldiers should be on their way. I am afraid we will all be quite dead by then, Curtis. You know, it is more the matter of Maidang's daughter, I think, than the desecration of the temple. He is very proud. If he does not go through with this, he is afraid he will lose faith. There is smoke down the road, Minier. There, Cornelius. Yeah. You see? My heavens. They are building a fire. Oh, no, but, but they wouldn't. I am afraid they would. How much time have we got left? About three minutes. I wonder... What? We might be able to do it. The back of the house. We could break it out. It is very flimsy. Even so. Well, there were only half a dozen Balinese with the two boys. If we could get down there before Maybank knew we were gone. Oh, no. I'd say, sir. You, sir, be quiet. They might have more men close by. Or we might not be able to reach them in time. Heaven knows I do not want to do it, Colin, but I, I can't see any other way, can you? No. We'll try it. You better stay in the doorway where they can see you in there. As soon as we've broken through. Cornelius, better take Markovic and try to get up to Singer Ahantia. At least we can possibly save one of them. I'll see it through here if you don't mind, sir. I do mind, sir. You will do as you are told. (laughs) 
I think I even surprised myself. <laughs> I mean, here was I giving orders as though I was a born military leader. It was extraordinary. And I was completely paralyzed with fear when I thought of what Medan would do to us if we failed. My heavens, I, I did not want to die, and most certainly not by Eastern methods. It seemed an age before I heard Curlin say that we were ready to go. For Medan's benefit, I had walked up and down in front of the doorway, keeping up a steady stream of aimless conversation. And now I hoped that my disappearance would not be noticed for the last minute or so of our day. Oh, I couldn't. Stay as close as you can to the buildings. I think you'll find it clear behind the town. Then you can make a circle around. Head for Singaraja. Mr. Markovich, you better have my gun just in case. Good luck. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry. Yes. So am I. Get help as quickly as you can, Cornelius. Yes, sir. Now then, Manea, we must be very quiet. Let me go first. Happily, you meant not to sound. Well, then I'll marry her. You will 
Uh, yes, yes, don't you see? see? My people are disgustingly well off. Well, we can do it. And then when I get home to England, we'll get it to Bournemouth. All very hush hush, of course, because Mummy will be absolutely furious. And then I'll ship her back to dear Daddy and Madame, you see, and she'll have so much money from the divorce settlement that she can own half of Barley. It might do. Well, I'll call it the very least I can do after all you did save my life, and I'm most terribly grateful. It might do. And then this puts the other chaps in the clear, you see, and then we can we can all go home. I will talk to Madame. I did. I am to the governor and the British consul, and finally, Madame Daughter Lelang. I think she was quite surprised, for she had no idea what it was all about. And I am sure she cared less. That being one of the delights of the Balinese maidens, their ingenuousness. But she agreed to marry Mr. Marcovich if he insisted, which about put an end to the matter. Maybank was a little touchy for the next two months or so, and the governor thought it wiser to close the Balinese ports to tourist ships until things calmed down. One rather odd thing, though, Maybank's daughter never did return to Bali. Western civilization must have intrigued her immensely, for she remained Mrs. Margaret, and the last time I heard from them, She's making a brilliant career for herself as a ballet dancer. I'm the mother of twins. Under the direction of Norman MacDonald, Escape has brought you A Matter of Conscience by Anthony Ellis, starring Parley Bear. Featured in the cast were Ben Wright and Harry Bartell, with Jack Crucian, John Daner, Don Diamond, and Terry Kilburn. Editorial supervision is by John Meston, and the special music for Escape is composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Next week. You are staggering across the blazing Sahara, your body charred by the sun. While somewhere ahead of you, lying in wait for you, is a tribe of natives ready to either make you their king or kill you. So listen next week when Escape brings you Les Crutchfield's exciting story, The Diary of a Madman. Mm -hmm.